Hey, this is Eric, and welcome to the Control-Alt-Achieve EdTech Links of the Week for December 11th, 2023. This is the show where I share educational technology links, resources, and news that I've come across in the last week, as well as any new posts and updates from my blog. This week, I have two resources to share from around the internet and eight updates from my blog. As always, you can access all of these links as well as resources from previous weeks at bit.ly slash CAA dash links. All right, let's get started with links from around the internet. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is a Chrome extension called Screen Mask. So this week, a colleague asked if I was aware of any good tools for screen masking. Uh, I knew of a couple, uh, but uh, I ended up testing a bunch of them out, and I settled on this one. So Screen Mask is a simple, free Chrome extension that darkens the page except for a bright bar that moves up and down with your mouse. The idea is to help the reader stay focused on the portrait of the page that they're reading and not get lost in the rest of the content. You can simply turn it on or off and then you can adjust the height of that bright uh, reading bar. So let's go ahead and test this out. Um, I do have this uh, extension installed so I'm going to pop on over to a web page here. Let's say I'm reading Alice in Wonderland here through the Gutenberg project. And uh, what I can do is simply come up to the screen mask extension, give a click on that, and you see there's the on off switch. So if I turn that on now, the majority of the page darkens except for this bar that is following my mouse as I am moving up and down the page. If I want to adjust the size of that bright bar, again, I can go up to the extension and I can drag that down to make it smaller or go to the extension and I can once again drag that up to make it much larger if I wanted a, a bigger area as well. And then when I'm all done, simply uh, go back up to the extension and turn it off when I am finished using that. So that is Screen Mask, a uh, free extension that does a really nice job of what it does. All right, let's move on to our second uh, resource from around the internet. And actually, this is a, a collection of about six resources, but we're just putting them all together in one. And that is some winter activity series that folks are uh, kind enough to share out. So uh, just like I'm doing my Cool Tools 2023 series, uh, lots of other ed tech folks out there are sharing winter themed uh, activity and learning series. So I've just been trying to collect those together and you can get to all of these on my main uh, Cool Tools uh, site there. If you go to uh, bit.ly slash cool dash tools dash 23 and scroll all the way to the bottom of my blog post, that's where I am sharing out the other um, activities and resources that people have put out. Uh, there's things like Classroom Cheer 23, GIFs of Google Activities, Techmas uh, 2023, EdTech Cheer 2023, the ugly sweater tech of the day. Uh, again, I've got about six of these at the moment. Uh, if you're aware of other ones that uh, either you have created or somebody else has created, uh, please send those my way. Basically, each one of these is going to take you through either 12 days of tech miss or through, you know, uh, multiple uh, days throughout the month sharing ed tech resources, typically one item per day. So thanks so much for those folks that are sharing those out. This is a great time of year for these. I always look forward to these each year and excited to uh, learn from the folks who are kind enough to compile these great resources and share these out at this time of year. So please do check those out as well. Well, speaking of cool tools, let's go ahead and switch over to the posts and updates from my blog. So as you know, uh, we are in the middle of my Cool Tools 2023 series. Uh, basically, what I'm doing is sharing one new cool tool per day from December 1st through December 24th, sort of like an ed tech advent calendar. Uh, and this year, the theme I'm going with is artificial intelligence tools and resources. That's a pretty hot topic. And as I release each new entry, I'm putting it on my blog. Uh, again, that was at bit.ly slash 
cool-tools-23. That'll get you to a blog post where you can see all of these tools as I share them out. There's a blog post for each one of them um, as they get shared out. But there's also a slideshow here that's LinkedIn as well that you can just click on the snowflakes to uh, click and jump out to check out each one of the cool tools as we work through those each day. So whichever way you prefer, the slideshow or the blog post, in the end, you'll get to all of those resources. Now, last week, we did the first four of these. So we shared Magic School AI, we shared QuestionWell, Padlet AI images, and Goblin tools. So if you'd like to get a little bit more detail on those, uh, you can check out last week's uh, video, or I've uh, went ahead and pulled out just the snippets from that video and added those links in there in the blog post. So you can just watch the five or so minutes per each item there as we covered them. Which means this week we've got quite a bit ahead of us here. That's why I said I had eight resources to share from my blog. Seven of them are just the cool tools. So this week we're going to take a look at School AI, Brisk Teaching, EduAid, Quizzes AI, Scribble Diffusion, Diffit, and CK12 Flexi. <laughs> so it's quite a bit to take a look at. I'll try to move quickly through these, just spend a couple of minutes on each one, but I want to give you at least a good feel for what these tools do. Again, you can get to each of them get to the blog post that goes into way more detail than I will do here just in these quick videos. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and do our best to work through these seven uh, cool tools uh, that have come out since last week. All right, so our first cool tool we're going to take a look at this week is uh, School AI. Now, this is one that I just came across a couple of weeks ago, uh, thanks to some of my EdTech friends, and I was blown away by this tool. It is easily one of my absolute favorite AI tools that is out there right now. So what is this thing that's got me so excited? So School AI is a free tool. Uh, there is a paid version, but uh, I'll be demonstrating the free version that allows your students to have a safe uh, monitored interaction with AI learning activities. And that's, that's a concern sometimes. You know, a lot of AI tools are age limited. You need to be 13 and above, or even if you are the proper age, schools may have some guidelines, understandably, on which AI tools are being used. Um, and so how can we use AI, not just to save us time, but how can we use it with our students? Well, that's the idea of school AI. Here's the quick gist of it. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the website and set up a free account for yourself. And then you're going to pick from either a pre-made AI experience or you can create one of your own. And we'll talk about what those experiences are. You then give an invite link to your students so that they can join that activity. They do not sign in. They do not get accounts, nothing like that. Uh, once they join that activity, then they can engage with the AI. They can uh, chat with it on whatever topic it was you chose. And all along the, the while, it is showing you every conversation. So you as the teacher, you can see everything your students are typing in. You can see everything that the AI is responding. Uh, so it's all in one place for you to monitor. And then at the end, the AI summarizes the entire class discussion. So you know what are the areas where the students might still need help, what are they understanding? Uh, it gives you wonderful feedback. Um, so let's do this. Let's head on over to the site um, and we will take a look at what this looks like. So um, here I am already logged into my account and under the spaces tab, you can see some of the sessions I've run in the past. I've been uh, playing around with this and trying this out with a lot of teachers, but let's say that I wanted to um, launch a new experience for my students. So again, I would sign into the website and I'd probably go to the, the discover tab because that's where I can see a lot of the pre-made experiences that are out here. So what sort of things can you do with this? So there's some really common popular things such as chatting with a historical figure. I can come here and click on that link and I will see loads and loads and loads of historical figures. We've got Abraham Lincoln here and we've got Charlie Chaplin and Cleopatra and uh, Leonardo da Vinci and on down the line here. Uh, lots of uh, uh, 
people I can uh, have my students chat with. Um, or let's go back and see what other options we have. We can do uh, careers. We can chat with folks who are um, supposed to be in a particular career, such as uh, um, directing a movie or working with robotics or a fashion designer. Or let's go back and see another category, diving into popular books. So we can have a chat about a book that we're reading. And they've got a wide range of books that have already been loaded into here, whether it's for younger students or older students as well. Now, with each one of those three, there's a bunch of pre-made ones. Well, if you can't find the historical figure that your students are studying or a career they're interested in or a book that you're reading, that's okay because you don't have to go with the pre-made ones. You can go down below. It says build your own. So you could build your own historic figure chat bot or book explorer uh, or your career exploration chat bot. So like if I went to historical figure chat bot, I could type in the historical figure that I want. And of course, I could add some more options as well. I could describe my class. I could give some custom instructions, let it know, hey, this is a fifth grade class and we're focusing on a particular you know, topic at the moment. And um, then I could put in who that historical figure is going to be. So the nice thing is, if you can't find something here that's already pre-made, no worries. Put in the book you, your students are reading, or put in the career, or put in the historical figure that they are studying. Now, outside of that, there's lots of other options here. You can create a bell ringer activity or an exit ticket so you can start or end the class. Uh, again, in each one of those, you're going to be um, guiding that a little bit more. It's going to ask you to put in the topic. So you could say, we are currently studying the water cycle, for example. And then again, I could say, you know, what grade this is? Is there anything specific? I want to ask the students, describe my class, give some directions. And this is going to basically be building a custom AI chat bot that the students can all chat with for a bell ringer or an exit ticket activity. There's even just a very open-ended general chat bot called Sidekick, where basically you can tell it whatever you want it to be. You can say, okay, this is what I want uh, the Sidekick uh, to do, and here's the options. Um, I, we did this with uh, one of the uh, teacher groups I was working with. Their students were studying limericks. And so we're like, okay, this is great. You know, Our, our students are currently learning about limericks, so that is the topic. Uh, they're struggling with rhyming, and so that's that's what you need to know about the students and their grade level. And I want you to help them to write a limerick. And it built a limerick builder, <laughs> you know, a chat bot. Uh, so it's really amazing how much um, variety you have here as far as what the chat bots can be. Uh, so the idea is we're going to pick one of these. So just to keep it simple for right now, I'm just going to go with a pre-made one. I'll say, let's go to books. And let's say we just use Charlotte's Web. I've used that one with a couple examples before, so I'll just use Charlotte's Web again. Now, if I want to, again, I can put in some more uh, options here. If there's a particular focus that we're working on. For class description, I'll say maybe my students are in fifth grade. But again, I could give custom instructions if there's a certain thing I really want the AI to focus on. Now, before I launch this, there is a Start Preview button over here. I can give a click on that and that just lets me be able to see what's the type of interaction we're going to see here. So in this case, you'll see the AI is saying, have you ever imagined what it would be like to have a friend like Charlotte from Charlotte's Web? Uh, now, I'm not saying you're going to get that exact question when the students go into it, but it's just showing you that's the kind of interaction that you might get. Please do note there is a speak button. It can read this aloud. So especially if you're working with younger students, they can click the speak button and the AI's text will be read aloud to them. There's also when they type in their message, there's a little microphone button. So if they're having a hard time typing themselves, they can click that microphone button and they can speak their response in there as well. Well, let's say all that's good and we're happy with that. We think that's great. That's when we click on the launch button. So when I click on launch, what it's gonna do is give me a link and a QR code as well, but I'm just gonna copy the link here. And basically that's what you need to get to the students. You need to give them the link to be able to access it. So if you use Google Classroom, this would be a wonderful way to do that. Just drop the link into your stream uh, or whatever. If you've got a class website, if you've got a shared document that you use as a bell ringer document for your students, if you use Schoology or Canvas or whatever it might be, the idea is to get the link out to the students. So let's go ahead and do this. Let me, um, I'll open up an incognito window so that I'm not logged in and I'll put that in. And you'll notice it basically just asks for my name. And so I'll just put in my name real quick and I'll hit join. 
and that's it. So the students are not creating an account. They're not signing up. Uh, they don't have to reveal anything like that. And so there we go. Now I would be chatting with the AI here. It's saying, imagine you could talk to animals like Fern does in Charlotte's Web. What would you ask them? You know. And so you know, now at this point, I would begin my uh, communication with the uh, with the AI. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and just show you the end result of what one of these might look like. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and tell you what, let me end that session. And I'm just going to go over to one of my earlier ones I did on Charlotte's Web. I'll just grab, and again, this was not with real students. This was me pretending to be students. So I'm not revealing any actual conversations here. I was just testing this one out myself. So what happens is, while this uh, chat is going on, you as the teacher can go and you can click on any one of your students and you can read all of the conversations. You can see what the, AI, what the AI has asked. You can see what the students have responded. And so for each student, I can go in and see that full conversation. And then I can also get insights. The AI will uh, pop up certain things that it is noticing and then it will give me an overall summary for the class. Again, this one was pretty quick. I only had, you know, three pretend students, but when you get 25 students in there doing a lot of chatting, you will get lots and lots of great insights on what they might be confused about, where they're interested, where they're doing well, uh, so it's just ideas for how you can help connect with your students better. Now, all that sounds pretty awesome, right? You may say, wow, you know, how much does that cost? So again, everything I share, you know, I hope, you know, everything I share is always free resources. Typically there's, you know, maybe a, a paid version, but there's always a nice robust uh, free option. And that is the same here. So basically the free tool, gives you everything I just showed you there, those teacher tools, all those different spaces, be able to create your own or use the ones that already exist. And basically what it does is it limits on how many um, sessions you can have running throughout the day. Um, and uh, the way that it's set up, um, you'll see if I go back into my uh, spaces here, and if I go ahead and say that I want to create a new space, you'll notice that it already has made a quick change here, it is saying my free participant limit, it now says one out of 150. That's because I did one interaction when I joined just a minute ago as a pretend student, I used up one of the 150 interactions uh, per day. So what that means is you could have 150 students connecting to one of these experiences and having as many chats as they want with it. So it's not, you know, it, they, they can go, they can answer as many questions as they want. That only counts as one connection, one, one interaction. So if you have, you know, maybe a middle school, a high school where you have 125 students or so, you're in good shape. You could create one of these activities and all 125 plus of your students could join at some point throughout the day and have a long lengthy chat with the chat bot and you'd be fine. If you do elementary and you only have, let's say maybe 25 or 30 students that you see all day, the same students, you could do multiple uh, activities. You could do a bell ringer and then you could do something at the end. You could do a chat with a historical figure. The idea is each time a student joins a new chat, that is a session. So that's really great. Now, if you did want, you certainly could, um, you know, uh, move up to the pro version. Uh, looks like it's about $15 a month there, which gives you, you know, way more ability to uh, have, you know, a, a lot more students chatting throughout the day. But the free version, I think, is very generous. And honestly, this is a wonderful way, a wonderful way. If you say, I want to use AI in my classroom right now, but I, I'm not sure. I don't know where to be again, this is a great tool for that because again, it is a safe monitored environment where students of any age are able to chat with an AI that you have uh, tailored to the needs of your classroom and you can monitor all of those conversations as well. So that is School AI. Uh, big, big shout out to them. Uh, so happy to be able uh, to share that resource with you guys. All right, let's move on to our next cool tool this week, which is Brisk Teaching. So Brisk Teaching is a Chrome extension that uses AI to assist with multiple tasks, including 
changing the reading level of a website or a document, uh, generating feedback for student work, generating lesson plans, quizzes, exemplars, and even helping to detect AI usage in writing projects. So a lot of things it does. Uh, this again is a Chrome extension, so we will need to turn that on. I have it installed, but I've got it turned off at the moment. I will go ahead and re-enable that. So that is now turned on. And now you can see the little brisk uh, icon up there in my extension bar. Let's go ahead and run through a couple of these features. Um, so the first one we mentioned was the ability to change reading level. Okay, so the idea is if I go to a website, so we'll come here to a uh, Dogo News article, uh, we'll also pull up a Google document as well because we can do this in uh, documents as well as websites. If I'm on a website, if I look down in the bottom corner, I should have a little brisk icon. And if I click on that little brisk icon, what it's gonna do is it's gonna scan through the page and try to determine what the reading level is. It's it's expecting this one is somewhere around, you know, about an eighth grade reading level. But notice in that little pop-up down there, I have the option to change the reading level. I can pick a different grade level above or below the current level. So I could say, let's drop this down to a fifth grade reading level. And I could also choose a different language if I want. Wanted. Uh, I'll leave it in English for this example here, uh, but let's say I'm happy with that. At this point, I can click change reading level. And what it does is it actually creates an entire new document. So it's going to pop open a new tab and in that new tab, there's going to be a Google Doc and it's going to start generating a new version of that particular article. Now, it doesn't have to just be an article. You can do this from a Google document as well. So whether it's a Google document or it's a website, um, <clears throat> you can choose a new reading level, it will pop open that new document and that is where it will generate that document. There you go. So here is our fifth grade level version of this article. And of course I can pop over to the side here. Brisk has some additional uh, options here such as to translate this, to make it shorter, longer, more detail, less detail, or to create other things from it like a quiz or a resource or a lesson or, or a vocabulary list. Um, in, in any of those cases, I can just choose what I want to do, click the brisket button, uh, which I love. If, if Brisk ever does a, uh, a meetup at a conference, I hope it is at a barbecue place where we get to have brisket uh, because that would be perfect. <laughs> They've got a brisket button and I love brisket. So I think it's a match made in heaven myself, but that's a little off the topic. <laughs> but again, so if I'm on a, a website, I can do this. Same thing if I am on a document. If I'm in a document, I can click on the brisk button and I can again choose change level and one once again, I could, I won't in this case, but I could change that reading level. So that's one option. Another thing we can do though, is we can use Brisk to give feedback. So from this George Washington report that I've got pulled up, I've got some intentional errors in this report. There's some spelling errors, some grammatical errors, things like that. I could come down here, click on the Brisk button, and I could click on give feedback. I could type what kind of feedback I'm looking for, or I could upload a rubric. I'll just say grammatical errors. And again, I could say what grade level was this written for? Let's say maybe this was, you know, an eighth grade uh, um, uh, report. And now I can click on the brisk it button. <laughs> Once again, uh, getting hungry here, uh, clicking on brisket so much. Uh, but there you go. It is now generating the feedback and notice what it does. It gives three types of feedback. It does a glow, a grow, and a wondering. So the glow is, you know, what was positive, what were some of the strengths of this, grow some areas where uh, improvements could be made, and wondering some suggestions to dive deeper, some extensions, some things you could do more uh, to go further with this particular writing. I could copy all of these, I could insert these, I could add them as comments in here. Really nice to have that available. All right, well, what else can we do with Brisk? Another option is to go down to the Brisk button and to choose Write with Brisk. So if you choose Write with Brisk, what's gonna happen here now is it's gonna generate new 
content. Now, let's say it's for this particular uh, document on George Washington. Well, I could come down to the bottom here and say, what do I want to generate? Do I want to do a resource, an exemplar, a quiz, a lesson plan, something else I could describe what it is? Let's say it's a quiz. Maybe I just want to do a, a simple quiz and it'll be a quiz over George Washington. So I'll say that's the topic. And we'll say, you know, again, maybe it's uh, eighth grade, multiple choice, three questions, go ahead and click on the brisket button and it is going to <clears throat> start generating those uh, multiple choice questions for us. Uh, once those are done, uh, I should again get the option to modify them, you know, more difficult, less difficult, shorter, longer, answer key, things like that. Fantastic. All right. And the final thing, that I'm going to point out again, it does quite a, quite a lot of stuff, but the last thing I'm going to point out is the AI detection. Now, I'm always really cautious about AI detection because there can be a lot of uh, false positives where an AI detector goes through a document and says, oh, this looks like it was written by an AI or written by a person. Not always accurate. The thing I like about Brisk, why I'm giving a little shout out to this, is it does more than just that. It also includes how many minutes were spent working on the document. And it's pulling that from version history. So if I come on down here and I click on the Brisk button for this George Washington uh, essay here, um, and if I go to detect AI writing, what you'll notice is it's saying it's unlikely that this was written by an AI, but look above, it says how many minutes were spent editing it? Zero minutes, which is accurate. This particular document, I just copied and pasted everything into it. That's a real good sign that, whoa, hold on a second. Maybe it wasn't AI written, but <laughs> it was probably copied from somewhere. Now, if I go to a different version of that, here's another uh, same essay, but this is one I actually typed up. If I go to detect AI writing, again, probably going to be low on the writing uh, probability scale there, but look at the editing, 40 minutes of editing. Now, that is very encouraging. That sounds Sounds like, yeah, sounds like the student really did take some time to work on this. Now, there's other tools. I did talk about one called Revision History, uh, a, a different extension uh, last week uh, that even adds some more features to that. But I think that's nice that Brisk does have that built in. Now, as far as uh, pricing on this, again, everything I'm sharing today, you know, has a good solid free version. Same here as well. The things I showed you, the AI detection, the Lexile conversion, the feedback, the curriculum tools, you do have access to all of those in the free version. There is a paid version that has a lot more things that it unlocks, especially in the, con in the content that it can create. But that is a great extension called Brisk. All right, let's move on to our next tool, which is EduAid. So EduAid is one of those tools that's similar to, um, I think we did Magic School the other uh, time. There's other ones like uh, um, Twee is a good example, or Almanac, where these are tools that collect together a whole bunch of pre-made AI prompts to save you time if you as an educator are wanting to, you know, uh, write a lesson plan or create an, uh, create an assessment or come up with a rubric and you're not really sure where to begin, well, a tool like EduAid has you covered because it has over 100 AI powered tools already created, ready to help you uh, create content for your class. These fall into a lot of different categories. They've got content generators, including, you know, planning and information objects and uh, questions and cooperative learning. There's an assistant tab. There's a feedback bot. There's an assessment builder. Uh, and all of these, you can typically just choose your subject area, your grade level, your content, and whoosh, away it will go. So let's pop on over to EduAid and take a look at this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and I'm already signed in, so I'll go ahead and just launch this real quick. And like I said, what you're going to basically get on the left-hand side are the tools, and the right-hand side is going to be what gets created. So going uh, on the left here, you'll see I have those different categories I mentioned, such as under planning, I could create, for example, a rubric or under informational objects. Maybe I want to generate a vocabulary list or under independent practice. Perhaps I want to come up with a choice board assignment. You get the idea. Cooperative learning, gamification, 
questions, multiple choice questions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's other categories here as well, like there's the assistant tab that has professional duties. So help it'll help you write an email or to uh, create a newsletter outline. There's an accessibility section for accommodations and Lexile increasers and decreasers. There's a wellness section with a bunch of SEL activities and more. Again, the idea is basically you're going to browse through these pre-made prompts, select one, and then choose what you want to create with it. So let's say that we are going to do social studies and we're going to do middle school. And let's say we're learning about the Boston Tea Party. That's one of my go-to ones. You'll probably see me use it <laughs> a few more times, uh, but let's just go with that. Let's say that social studies, middle school, Boston Tea Party. And let's say that I want to work on prior knowledge and scaffolding. Like what, what do my students need to know before we start talking about the Boston Tea Party? What are some key things that we need to make sure we've covered? Well, if I make all those selections and come down here and click on the Add to Workspace button, give it a moment, and now it's gonna start generating on the right-hand side the prior knowledge that they need, as well as some scaffolding activities that might help these students as they ease on into this new unit. Now, once that's been generated, I can just come over here and hit the copy button, copy that, paste it anywhere I want. Now I can use that however I want to use that, which is fantastic. Now, uh, I do like these kind of tools because I do understand sometimes you go to ChatGPT or you go to Bard or you go to Copilot and you're like, I'm not sure what to type in. I just got this, you know, blinking cursor in ChatGPT. I don't know where to begin. Well, a tool like this can be a really nice way to ease people into using AI because basically the prompts are already written. You're just giving it a couple of key items and it's going out and it's, and it is actually talking to ChatGPT. Uh, ed, uh, the EduAid tool does connect to ChatGPT. So basically it's just doing that job for you and providing a really nice, well-tailored prompt to get these results and then bringing them back to you. Now, could you go to ChatGPT and do the same things? Sure, absolutely. We could go there and say, hey, I'm a social studies teacher. I teach middle school and I need to teach about the Boston Tea Party. Give me a list of prior knowledge that my students should know and some scaffolding options that may help them. I could type that in and I probably would get a very similar response. But again, that might not be where you're at yet. You're like, you know, honestly, <laughs> I just, I just want to be able to pick from a menu and have it generate these things. And this can be a good way to begin learning how to interact with AI and see, huh, I never even thought about that. That's a really great option to use the AI to do X, Y, Z. All right. Now, as always with all these, we do mention about pricing. So this one likewise um, does have a free version and a paid version. The free version, it is a bit limited. Um, it is limited to 15 generations per month, which really is more of a, just kind of give you an idea, is this valuable to you? You can try it out, you can test this out and see if you're getting responses that you're happy with. Um, and if so, it is relatively inexpensive for the paid plan. It's it's about six bucks a month, $5.99 a month, and that gives you unlimited generations at that point. So uh, compared to some of the tools, um, a little bit um, uh, slimmer on how many you how many generations you can do for free, but they've partnered that with a relatively low price if you do want to move up to the paid version. Again, that is EduAid, a uh, hundred pre-made ready-to-go AI power tools to help you out. All right, well then let's move on to our next tool, which is Quizzes AI Beta. All right, so Quizzes is not a new tool. So Quizzes has been around for a long time. You may have used Quizzes. It's a great way to be able to generate quizzes and lessons to get students you know, interacting. It's, it's a great, great, great tool. What we're looking at is that they've recently added AI. They've baked AI right in to quizzes. And basically what it will do is two main things at the moment. It'll help you create quizzes. So you can basically say, here's my topic. Here's my you know, link to an article. Here's a video, whatever the case is. And it will generate a quiz for you using AI. And then after the quiz has been generated, AI can enhance the questions. You can go in and say, okay, let's adjust these questions. And there's a lot of AI options for doing that. So let's go ahead and take this for a spin. Uh, so for my um, 
uh, uh, examples here. Let's say we want to, you know, create something um, with AI. Uh, look at let's look at the options we have here, and then we'll pick one of these uh, that we'll try. So notice here under the create with AI. First of all, we've got a create with YouTube option, which basically means we can just put in a link to a YouTube video. Um, and so this would allow you to grab a, a link from a YouTube video. It doesn't have to be just YouTube, though. It's really any link from the web. So it could be like a just a website as well. So an article, if the students are reading an article, you paste in the link and quizzes is going to jump out and grab that content pull that in, and then it's going to build the quiz off of that. Now, if instead of using a link, other options, you can also do the use an existing document uh, approach where you can upload a file or grab something from your Google Drive. So this will work with PDFs or Word docs or PowerPoints or Google Drive files. And again, it will read in the content from that file and then it will build a quiz off of that. And then the uh, other option is the add a topic approach, where basically you can just put in a topic, say, okay, we're learning about photosynthesis. You know, you could just put in the topic, pick the grade level and boom, let it go and it will generate it. Or you can actually paste in an excerpt of text. If you have, you know, up to 10,000 characters, we can paste in there. You can have an article or something out of your textbook, put that right in and it will generate the quiz. For our example today, though, let's just go with a video link. I think I've got a link here I'm going to copy. It's, um, the uh, Crash Course Kids website, um, or the, the Crash Course Kids YouTube channel. Uh, this is a YouTube video on uh, food webs, I believe. So I'm just going to put that uh, link in there, and I'll say, uh, let's just do five questions. We'll keep it pretty quick and simple there. We'll click generate questions, and away it goes. So again, what's nice is it really doesn't matter, you know, what the original content is. It can be a video, it can be an article online, it can be a Google Doc, it can be a PDF, it can be a blurb of text, it can be just a topic. You can just give it a topic and it will generate. And there we go, there it is. Five questions quickly generated here. Uh, questions on, you know, what is the interaction of living and non-living things in a habitat called? Which would be ecosystem? What role do spider monkeys play in the tropical rainforest? And on and on down the line. Fantastic. So there we go, I now have, my five questions that have been generated. And you could just stop there. If that's it, if you're good, go ahead and publish. Uh, go ahead and publish your quiz and then you can give the link out to the students and then they can start taking that quiz. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Having said that, we said there's a second part to the AI, which is after you generate it, you can use this menu that says make the quiz better with quizzes AI. And so we can modify the questions. So for example, we can fix grammatical errors. If we had created the quiz ourselves and we were worried there might be an error in it, it could go through and catch those. So you could apply this to old quizzes that you have in the system. You could go back and give them a little AI update as well. Um, we can choose to replace uh, questions with similar questions. We can add three similar questions to a question we've chosen. We can translate questions into another language. Under differentiate, we can convert questions into real world scenarios. We can reduce the number of options, like in a multiple choice question, so there's not as many to choose from. We can add an answer explanation. So if they get a, a question wrong, it can give them feedback to explain that. There's also the option to improve engagement by adding a theme to the quiz, adding the students' names in throughout uh, the quiz questions, making the questions fun, and again, once again, converting into real world scenarios. There's also a show all button, which will show you all of the things you can do there. So that's a neat way to be able to apply either to the entire quiz, or you could just go question by question. I just have a single question here. I could click on the little magic wand button and say, for just this question, let's translate it or add an explanation or convert it to a real world scenario or a place it with a similar question or whatever the case might be. And so we could come even here under converting, we could reduce the options. So we could just do that for an individual question. So we'll do that for this. Let's say we're going to reduce the options on this particular question. We'll apply the changes. And now there's only two options rather than four to pick from. So whether you're using the AI to build the quiz or using the AI to enhance the quiz afterwards or both, uh, quizzes now has AI built 
right into the system. Now, again, we always want to talk about pricing here. So uh, everything I've been showing you, of course, is the free version. And so the free version does let you do all of that. The big limitation is how many active quizzes projects you can have at once. You can have up to 20 activities currently stored. Uh, so if you end up doing more than 20 quizzes, you know, they're going to have to start archiving off or getting rid of some of them to create new ones. Um, or again, they do have uh, obviously paid plans uh, for schools uh, that have un un unlimited storage there as well. But even with the free version, really, really nice, exciting, great way to be able to use AI with a wonderful tool like quizzes. All right, and that brings us to our next tool, which is Scribble Diffusion. So Scribble Diffusion is a free open source AI powered web app that lets you draw a rough sketch and then add a text prompt and then it generates an image based upon your sketch and your prompt. So this is one of those AI text to image generators, but it's a text and sketch to image generator, which is really neat, adds a little twist on there. So just like any of these AI image generators, this is fantastic. If you need to generate images for content that you're creating, like a slideshow or a document or a website, uh, maybe generating images to serve as a writing prompt or a story starter for students or to illustrate stories. Maybe a student has written a story or a poem and we want to have some images that go along with it. We can't find something that matches. We could have a, you know, sketch out the little sketch and put in a description and generate those images. Uh, and of course, once the images are created, you can download them and use them any way you'd like. So let's pop on over to the Scribble Diffusion website um, and you'll see it already has uh, an example put in here for us. We can just use the one that's in here if we want. Uh, if not, you can hit clear and you can just draw your own example in there uh, to save a little time. I'll just I'll go with the one they've got here already. That is totally fine. Um, and then we can give a description down below. In this case, a goofy owl is what they put in. But again, up to you. You draw the sketch of what you want and then you put in the description of what it's going to be. Let's go ahead and just hit the go button there and give it a moment to do its thing. And so basically what's happening is it's going to take the sketch that we've drawn. Well, in this case, I know I didn't draw it, but the sketch that I could have drawn and it will take the description that we've given it. And then over here on the side, it's going to generate that image. And there we go. Here is our image. And it did a really nice job. So you can see it's matching the general sketch of the image um, and it has created that app. Now I can simply right click on that owl and I can uh, save the image, download that to my computer, or I can just copy it and just paste it into a slideshow or paste it into a document and that'll work fine. If for any reason I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not really happy with that particular owl, you can just go up and click the go button again and it will just do another one. You can run it more than once. That's totally fine. It'll, it'll generate another one. They'll be similar, but it'll be a little bit, you know, different each time. Now, if you wanted to, of course, you could always modify the original. If you're like, well, okay, I did a couple goofy owls and none of them are quite doing exactly what I was looking for there. You could come up and you could either redraw it or add something new to there, or you could even adjust the prompt. Like I could say a goofy owl in the style of a Vincent Van Gogh painting. And now if I run it, we should be getting something that probably I'm going to guess is going to look like starry night. Perhaps will be some of those swirls and stuff like that in there. I'm assuming that's probably what it's going to do. So if you're not getting what you're looking for the first time, either change the picture or change the description or both. And uh, again, once that generates, we should have a uh, another owl here this time, I'm assuming, uh, with a little bit of a Vincent Van Gogh-esque um, uh, uh, style there. Taking a little bit longer for this one, uh, we'll give it a little bit of time. If that doesn't pop up soon, we'll just swing back around and take a look at it later and see what it ends up. Oh, and there it did come. Okay. So, and yes, look at the, very much so. I, do, I am getting the Starry Nights vibe. That's a really great picture. I'm actually really happy with that. And again, you could just right click on it and say save, or you could hit copy image and you could just copy and paste it and use it however you want. When it comes to pricing, there actually is no price <laughs> for Scribble Diffusion. It is just free. So this is a free tool that you're allowed to use and anything you create, you're allowed to use however you would like to. So an awesome AI 
text and sketch to image generator. All right, well, that brings us to our next tool, which is Diffit. So Diffit is an AI powered tool that creates differentiated reading as well as resources, associated resources for students. Uh, basically, this uh, allows you to adapt pretty much any you know reading passage, excerpt, article, video to any reading level that you want, but it also can generate the text. If you don't have the original text, you can say, I need this topic and I need it at this certain reading level and it will create the text for you. But then not only does it do that for the text, but then it also will generate um, resources to go along with it. A summary, uh, vocabulary words, uh, assessment items, things like that to go along with it. All right, well, let's try this out. So I'm going to head over to the Diffit website here, and you'll see here are our options. This is going to seem pretty similar to what we've seen in some of the other tools where there's multiple ways to be able to give it the original content. So the first option is literally anything, which basically means we can put in a topic, a term, or a question here. So we'll go with our ever popular Boston Tea Party. We uh, have had a lot of success with that. So I could just put the Boston Tea Party in there and then I could pick the the reading level and the language and if I hit generate resources right now it would go ahead and create the the uh, text itself so I've not given it an article on the Boston Tea Party it's actually going to write an article about the Boston Tea Party in this case for me there's another option though at the top which is to put in a link to an article or a video so again if I had a video about the Boston Tea Party which I do I could just put that link in and then again I could pick the grade level or the language or this could be a link to an online PDF or this could be a link to an article online in this case it's not going to make something brand new it's going to take the text of the article or the transcript of the video and it will rewrite it at the reading level you've asked for and then lastly, there's the option to put in a text or an excerpt. And so in this case, I could just have maybe several paragraphs about the Boston Tea Party that I've already got. I could just paste all of those in. And once I've got that pasted in, then I could come down here and again, choose the reading level or the language that I want this to be at, and it will generate that new content. So if I have the original text itself, that's another way to do it. So let's just, we'll just go with that. Let's say I have the original text here, about four paragraphs on the Boston Tea Party, and I'll say, sure, let's put this at, uh, you know, fifth grade is, is certainly fine. Uh, English for the language looks great. Let's go ahead and generate the resources. Now, it's going to, again, take that text now, it's going to rewrite it at a fifth grade level and then generate associated resources. And there we go. Excellent. So now you see we're getting the adapted passage. So there's the new passage where it's taken that original article and created a new version of it. A couple of things. Let's work our way down from the top to the bottom here. Do note at the very top, it still says fifth grade. If you read through it and said, hmm, still not quite what I needed. Can we drop that down to fourth or bump that up to sixth? You could adjust the grade level and have it regenerate that for you. There's also a translate button at the top if we want to translate this into uh, another language here. We have many that we can choose from there. But let's say that fifth grade is the right level, we can do other things such as adjusting the length. So basically it took what was about a four paragraph um, article and it turned it into a two paragraph article. I can click adjust length and say, okay, it's at, set at short. I could bump it up to medium, to long. I can even say original length. And if I do that, basically it's going to stay as big as the original reading, but the vocabulary has been adjusted to be a fifth grade vocabulary. So you could adjust the length from, you know, if they said uh, short, medium, long, or original. Of course, we can hit the edit button to edit this if we need to make some changes ourselves. And we can hit the copy button at any time to simply copy this and paste it wherever we want. We now have our new version of the text and we can paste it and use it anywhere else.
Now, if that's all it did, that'd be pretty cool. But if you scroll down the page, you'll see it does a few more things. For example, it does a bullet point summary. It does key vocabulary words where it gives you the word, a definition, and a sentence using it. There's multiple choice questions. There are short answer questions, and there are open-ended prompts. For every one of these, you can do all the same things. You can edit any of these. You can copy any of these. Many of these allow you to add more. So for example, here I can click add vocab words and I can add additional vocabulary words, or I can add more multiple choice questions, or I can add more short answer questions and it will generate those for me as we go. And if it is something like multiple choice, I can show the answers too, or short answer, I can show the answers since those have a more uh, specific answer that can be given. Every one of these, again, we can hit the copy button at any point to be able to copy and use that content. Which speaking of, when it comes to exporting and sharing, that's probably one of the easiest ways to do that is just hit the copy button and you can copy any of this and use it however you want. If you do click export and share, you will notice with the free version, you're allowed to print or save as a PDF this content. If you want it in any other form though, that is part of the paid version. So if you wanna send it to a Google Doc or you wanna send it to a Google Form or send it into a Google Slideshow, those, there's a lot of great templates here to send it into. Those are part of the paid version. So for free, probably one of the easiest things to do is just use the copy button and then you can just copy and paste it yourself individually there as you go. Speaking of the uh, versions, um, they are rolling out a paid version here, uh, I believe at the start of the year. Um, at the moment, um, the way it looks is that the uh, free version has all the things that I showed you there, but has some limits such as the length of the input, uh, 2,500 words for the article that you submit uh, versus 10,000 words for the paid version, and also the exports, uh, the ability to send the results out to a document or a form or a slideshow that is part of the paid version. But again, uh, lots and lots of robust features there in the free version. So that's Diffit, a great way to be able to take uh, a topic or an article or a video and differentiate it for your students. All right, that brings us to our last cool tool for this week, which is Flexi from CK12. All right, so if you don't know about CK12, they've been around a long time. They're, they're not new. CK12 uh, is an organization that creates open educational resources that are aligned to state standards, uh, including online textbooks and virtual simulations and digital study guides. They're fantastic, so basically totally free free online digital textbooks in a wide, wide range of subjects. They started off mostly math and science, but they've continued to expand out as time has gone on. Well, CK12 has added a new feature and that's called Flexi, which is um, a free AI powered digital tutor for students when they are using CK12 content. Now at the moment, Flexi is focused on middle school and high school science and math. Really good chance it'll expand out to more of their content areas, but at least for now, middle school and high school science and math. And what Flexi can do, it's basically a little AI chat bot that can pop up when a student is inside of a CK12 uh, digital book or if they're using the homework helper page. And it can provide feedback to help students learn topics. It can answer any questions that the students have. It can create interactive examples for them to try out. It can test their knowledge. It can support them by giving hints, not just giving the answer, but giving hints on how to do something, uh, connecting them with content from CK12 um, that could help them learn more. So to get to this, the links are again all available uh, in our uh, um, on our, uh, our website at bit.ly slash CAA dash links. You can get to all of these links there for that. But there's two main spots where a student would go to access Flexi. One of them is going to be from an actual CK12 flex book. So uh, at the moment, like we said, this would involve books for uh, science. So earth science, life science, physical, biology, chemistry, and physics, as well as math topics, grades six, seven, eight, 
algebra, geometry, algebra two, and pre-calculus. So at the moment, those are the flex books that uh, the Flexi AI tutor can work with. So if a student's inside of one of these books, while they are reading it, interacting with it, they'll always have the little Flexi AI tool that will pop up and assist them while they're going through. Uh, the other way that they can access it is on the homework help Q&A page uh, that students have access to. This is basically a spot to go to get homework help, and the, uh, the Flexi tool is going to be able to help you at any point in here. So for example, if I come down to science or math, I can click on any, we'll just go sixth grade math. And then inside of sixth grade math, I can pick a topic. So I might want to say, okay, I'm trying to learn about, you know, ratios. And then here's, I could type in my own question, or I could go with a common question, like what are ratios? And at that point, Flexi is going to pop up. And so Flexi is now popping up saying, hey, this is what a ratio is. Would you like to continue discussing this? And so you can have a conversation with uh, the Flexi tool. Now, if I'm not finding exactly what I'm looking for here, I can just click on Flexi myself at any point. So from this homework help page, if you look in the bottom left, it's been sitting there the whole time. <laughs> There's the little Flexi icon down in the bottom left corner. So even if I don't drill down into here, I could just click on Flexi at any point and I could pop up that little chat tool that's sitting right there. And so I could just say, hey, I'm struggling with maybe adding integers. Maybe, you know, again, I'm learning math and I'm struggling with positives and negatives. I could just pop in here and I could say, hey, can you explain how do you add integers when they have different signs? And of course, there's a little microphone if I just want to speak this uh, as well as type it. Well, let me submit that. And now Flexi is going to interact with me and hopefully give me some help here. So Flexi is now generating this saying, yeah, sure thing. Well, when you add integers and it's going through and it's explaining how you're going to, you know, uh, actually subtract. If they're two different signs, you're going to subtract the numbers and then pick the sign of the one that had the larger absolute value. And it's giving me some examples to show that. So first of all, Flexi is doing a nice job of teaching the concept. And now it's saying, hey, would you like a question based on this? And so I'll be like, sure, go ahead. You know, let's try this out. And now it's going to say, okay, can you solve the following? And it's going to now generate a question. If you've got two integers, negative three and four with different signs, what would be their sum? And so again, I can just put in my answer if I know it, but maybe I'm still struggling. No worries. I can click help me solve this. And now Flexi is going to talk me through that step by step and say, okay, let's break this down. So what you're seeing here is just this wonderfully fine-tuned AI that's designed to come alongside and help students if they are struggling. In this case, it's going to say, okay, negative three and four are two numbers. What's the absolute value of three or of negative three? And I could put in, well, three is three is what I believe the answer is. And it's going to hopefully tell me that, uh, yes, I, yes, I've got that right. And again, it's going to walk me through step by step. Says, that's correct. That's very good. And now it's going to say, what's the absolute value of four? You get the idea here. And so it's walking me through. And at any point, I could be like, I'm not sure. I could click get a hint if I'm not sure if that is correct or not. And again, it can help me as I work through these. So I really like the fact that it's meeting the student where they're at and it's able to continue to dig deeper and uh, give them them examples um, on whatever the particular math or science topic is that they're working on. And again, I love this because this is a safe way to use AI with our students uh, through, in this case, CK12. So if you have not used uh, the CK12 resources in general, I absolutely recommend them. But specifically, uh, this is a best uh, a good time as ever to jump on into it because we now have the flexi tool the flexi ai tool to come alongside inside of all of the ck12 books and on their homework helper page here as well good stuff all right well that brings us to the final thing i was going to share those are all of the um uh the uh, cool tools of the week but i did have one last item that was on my blog that i wanted to give a shout out to before we wrap things up today and that is an upcoming training uh that i'm doing for the uh, teacher innovation network uh their ed tech 
uh, playground series. I did this uh, last year as well, uh, doing it again this year. Uh, this is a free virtual training series uh, that the Teacher Innovation Network offers uh, each year. Uh, my time I'm gonna be doing is on January 30th of 2024 and um, they're out in California or they're out <laughs> they're on the west coast anyway so they've got it listed as 3 30 to 5 p.m pacific time uh, I'm on the eastern you know end of things so that's going to be 6 30 to 8 p.m uh, on this end of the country and you can adjust for wherever you're at um, I'm going to be talking about accessibility that's going to be my topic that I'll be sharing uh, 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 Kat, uh, Catherine Goyette is uh, joining me she's doing this as well so we're the two guest speakers they typically give each of us like you know a chunk of time to present and then we have more of like a hands-on uh, portion after we present where people can jump into breakout rooms and work on some of these things a little bit more hands-on so we're gonna be covering accessibility for that one if that sounds neat to you please sign up um, you can get there at tinyurl.com slash tin 2023 uh, tin for teacher innovation network work. Uh, that'll take you to the website where you can register for free and not only be able to attend this one, but get access to all of the other uh, trainings in the series. And I do have a blog post on my website where I go into much more detail about that there as well. But thanks to uh, the Teacher Innovation Network for including me in this uh, upcoming PD opportunity. All right, and that is it, believe it or not. We made it to the end. <laughs> uh, normally, these are not quite this long, but we're doing the Cool Tools series. So yeah, until we get out of this, they're going to be a bit longer. I typically don't have <laughs> seven or eight new things to share each week. That's a little unusual. Uh, we'll get back probably to the normal two or three things. Uh, but for now, uh, these are a little bit longer. So thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, go through these with me here today. Um, as always, if you've got questions, if you've got comments, if you've got resources to share, please do connect with me. The easiest way is at bit.ly slash CAA connect. That'll get you to um, the page on my control alt achieve uh, website where you can find all of my contact information, my email, my social medias, YouTube channel, my email newsletter, my Facebook group, my email discussion group, lots and lots of ways to connect. Um, I would love to hear from you and any suggestions you have for uh, tools to include in these uh, EdTech links of the week. And as always, be sure to go to bit.ly slash CAA links to access the resources from this episode, as well as all the previous weeks and the weeks to come. Until next time, thanks so much and take care.